What's going on guys and welcome to the biotech channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I thought maybe I'll just share some exciting news on biotech with you that is not about the COVID vaccine. And I also want to check how these type of videos are received at the other end. So let me know if you find it interesting, if you find it helpful, or it's just anything that doesn't interest you. So let me know in the comment section. So what type of exciting news I'm about to share with you in this video? So this video will be just on some research in biotech across the world. So let me know how you find it. So the first research that I wanted to share with you is about glowing trees. Yes, you heard me right. Glowing trees. So this research has been done by a group of scientists in Russian Research Academy in Moscow who made the tobacco plant glow by using the DNA of a fungi that had the capability of bioluminescence. So how'd they do it? So you've probably heard the term bioluminescence. Bioluminescence is a result of a biochemical reaction in which the energy is emitted in the form of light inside an organism. So normally bioluminescence takes place in some fungi, some algae or deep water fish and smaller plants and not in bigger plants. So what these researchers from Russian Research Academy, what they did was they introduced four genes from a fungi into the tobacco plant and the tobacco plant was able to glow like the fungi. So what actually happened there? So the four genes that they took from the fungi carried the information for four different enzymes. And one of the genes was for the enzyme luciferase, which catalyzes the oxidation of luciferine and emits energy in the form of light in fireflies. It's the same process that takes place in fireflies. And the other three enzymes make a cyclic reaction. So the three enzymes, they facilitate the formation of luciferine from caffeic acid, which is actually a normal byproduct in every plant. So it was a continuous cyclic reaction and the plant didn't need any additives from outside. So it, that's how it was able to glow. So there are two very obvious applications for this process. Number one is commercial use and number two is for diagnostics. So if you could genetically modify evergreen street plants or indoor plants, you might be able to create bigger plants who, which like glow 24 seven. So the evergreen plants could be used as street lights or indoor lights. So that could save a lot of energy and solve some of our energy crisis. This process could also be used for diagnostics. For example, metabolic diseases or environmental factors that affect the growth of plant or um, also reaction to some chemicals could be found using this experiment by just detecting the intensity of the luminescence. So it could be very useful in commercial as well as in diagnostics. Next, we have healing band-aids or plasters, whatever you call them. So normally the band-aids or plasters don't heal the wound. They just protect the wound. But now the scientists at Ninjing University in China have developed a gel that contains living cyanobacteria, which could be placed on a plaster and that plaster then could heal the wounds. So cyanobacteria, like any other photosynthetic organism, plant or algae, they produce oxygen during photosynthesis. So the scientists combined living cyanobacteria with a hydrogel that was made from alginate and placed that on a wound using a membrane so that the bacteria don't penetrate the wound. And according to their calculations, the wound healed 200 times faster than normal. And in their experiment on mice, they showed that the wound healing for really severe wounds was accelerated 12 times as compared to the other healing methods, which normally included gaseous oxygen supply from outside. So, and they were also able to show that the blood vessel formation was also really fast. And in the journal Nature Biotechnology, some other scientists have also suggested that the wound healing using this process, using this plaster, could be accelerated even more. So this plaster could also be used for large burn wounds and it could also be used to treat diabetic foot. So if you have seen the soles of a diabetic patient, you might have seen that their soles are really uh, damaged and torn and their skin is not able to heal itself due to the poor circulation. So this plaster could be used to treat their soles as well. So it could be really helpful to the diabetic patients as well. Then we have an exciting cancer detection method. A group of American scientists have examined 18,000 different tumor samples and they found microbial DNA in most of the tumors. Then they ran some blood tests on these samples. Normally for cancer detection, they take a biopsy of that tissue and using blood testing methods, they take the blood and they examine the DNA of the tumor cells actually. So these scientists actually took the blood sample, but they didn't examine the tumor cell DNA but the microbial DNA. So what's the benefit of testing whether or not there's microbial DNA in the blood sample? Well, usually cancer detection through blood sample is not very reliable. 
It doesn't detect the cancer cells in early stages, but using this method by looking at microbial DNA can help detect the cancer cells in early stages. So how is it actually possible to detect cancer cells by using microbial DNA in the blood? It is actually known that many bacteria feed and multiply on tumor cells, like fusobacteria that are found in the intestine and that can invade the cancer cells and accelerate the cancer growth by releasing different enzymes. So by accelerating the cancer growth, the bacteria multiply itself as well. So when you take blood samples and it has the DNA of fusobacteria, then you know that there is an indication of intestinal tumor in that person. And this process could be used to detect many other tumor types like neck, prostate or the intestinal that we just talked about. And in the journal Nature Biotechnology, some scientists have already mentioned that if we could somehow genetically modify that bacteria so that it produces enzymes that actually destroy the tumor cells, it might be a way to cure the cancer cells. And then we have a cancer treating nanocapsule. So this was accomplished by Harvard medical scientists. So they actually created a nanocapsule from biodegradable polysaccharide and attached this nanocapsule to the red blood cells of the recipient. So they performed this experiment on mice and it was really successful. So they encapsulate this cancer treating drug and then attach it to the red blood cells, then inject it into the patient and when these red blood cells reach the site, they then release the nanocapsule. Well, actually the nanocapsule detaches due to the shear force of the bloodstream. Actually, what I forgot to mention is this nanocapsule is used to treat lung cancer only, but it's still a nice step forward to cure cancer or lung cancer in this case. So according to their research, this method is 16 times more effective than the usual chemotherapy methods with relatively less side effects. But the problem with this method is that it cannot cure cancer cells in lungs at early stages. But still, it's a nice step forward. So further testing on this product is actually being done. So let's see what happens next and whether or not they can improve this method. So that's been it for today. I hope you liked the information that I at least tried to share. If not, let me know in the comment section and whether or not these type of videos do interest you. And sources to these published papers, I'll just name them in the description. So that's been it. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.